Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. Today I have another Stamp Timber exclusive from Simon Says Stamp. This is the My Favorite Things Owly Owlways, my favorite. Wow, I can't even say that punny greeting. This is an awesome owl themed stamp set. There is a stamp die combo as well as a stamp only option. This is limited edition exclusive. So when it's gone, it's gone if you want to add this to your collection. And of course, with it being my favorite things, it's really going to tie back to a lot of the other my favorite things products that you might already own. And you might be asking yourself, is she really going to create another moon masked background? And the answer is yes, I am. <laughs> I cannot get enough of these moon masks. They are not brand new. This, I believe, was released last year in 2021, and I love it. There are three sizes in this set from Tim Holtz. I'm using the mask first, and I am inking kind of the glow around my moon with antique linen. My goal for my card today was to make it fall themed. Um, instead of Halloween, you've probably seen quite a few Halloween from me. You've seen some Christmas from me last year. I really wanted to have this fall feeling background that wasn't Halloween-ish. Now, obviously, depending on what you use with it, you could turn it Halloween, but I wanted to do something different than what I've done. So we're going very much neutrals. I did antique linen. Wild honey is really gonna be the only kind of quote unquote color I pull into this where it's that bright yellow that kind of creates a glow here and there. For me, these moon backgrounds, what is so fun about them is literally watching the sky that I imagine in my head take shape. Because what we end up with is nothing like where we start. Now I'm taking ground espresso and I'm working that into the design. I want to be really careful that I leave a couple of yellow glowing areas as well as some of that glow around the moon. I never want the moon to be super sharp edged and so you'll see kind of how I work around that as I remove the moon mask and start adding in a little more color. So very neutral, very fall with the color choices so far. Black soot is what I always, probably 99% of the time, pull into any nighttime scene background because it just adds that extra layer of nighttime. So see how I'm avoiding the yellow areas in there. I want, again, for there to be some of that glow and I'm gonna work my way around it. Now the edge of my moon, super sharp at this point, way sharper than what I want. On my brown blending brush, I do still have some ground espresso and I am going to work my way all the way around the edge, blending some of the ground espresso into the antique linen. I'm going back with black soot and I'm going to work this in even over the moon. Then I need to grab my moon detail and I'm gonna place that right there over the moon and we are going to apply whatever's left on my brown blending brush, which is ground espresso on the moon. And then I'm gonna go take, remove the mask and dull that edge a little bit with my ink blending tool. And then we are going to create some clouds with white pigment ink. So I love how clouds look over a moon background. Any cloud stencil is going to work here. Um, definitely see what you have in your stash. I believe this one is Lawn Fawn. Obviously my favorite things has tons of moon stencils. Um, Simon Says Stamp has moon stencils. Lots of our favorite companies have moon stencils. So whatever you have in your stash. Now I put my white pigment ink on an acrylic block and pick it up from there because I have Distress Oxide ink on my background. It's going to pick up that ink and transfer it to my white blending brush. You can kind of see it there on camera how it's picking up all those browns and yellows. If you would try to pick up the ink on your ink pad, it is going to transfer that ink to your white ink pad and you definitely don't want that. So I press the ink into something else and I pick it up from that brush. Then I have created these clouds all over the background. 
which I love. And we're going to grab my splatter box. And I have the Harvest Moon Distress Mica Stain, my favorite color. I love all of them, but I this is the one I keep reaching for. I'm going to put my moon mask back in place. I almost forgot. And I'm going to spray a little of this Harvest Moon Mica Stain in my box and pick it up with a paintbrush. I have a ton more control with a paintbrush than I do just spritzing all over the background I spent all that time creating. And you can see I'm kind of doing my my sparklies in a diagonal. I haven't masked anything else off, but I just am not going clear out to the other two edges. And I love how it turned out. I'm going to set this aside to dry. I love, love, love the Harvest Moon golden glow on our kind of harvesty background. I think it looks amazing. From the Owl, I still can't say it, Owl Ways, my favorite stamp set. I have stamped the tree branch twice. There's also a stump image, which I really love. But I'm going to use the tree branch twice, and I'm going to stamp three owls and three hearts. There are five owls total in the stamp set, and I think two branches, one coming in from each side, kind of works with the design I'm thinking. We're also going to use multiple, um, sentiments from our set. I felt like it just kind of fit the design of the card and I was happy to see it worked out. The colors of Copic markers I'm using for my card today are shown or listed, pardon me, in the description down below the video here on YouTube as well as on my blog post which you can find the link for that down in the description too. I will be using the Brother Scan and Cut to cut out my images today as I didn't have the dies at the time of filming the video. I'm using E55, 57, and 59 for the branches and then we're going to go for some reds, yellows, and greens for the little leaves. Because I want this to feel like a fall themed card, it definitely wouldn't have to be. I did a deeper, darker red color combination for my little red hearts and a yellow green, kind of an olive green color combination for the little leaves. So there's green. We're also going to have like a little yellowish orange and red. This is, these are super quick and easy to color. And I love that I believe they do coordinate back to some other stamp sets from my favorite things. So if you have some of those, I think it would be an awesome addition to your collection. I'm gonna do a blue violet color combination for one of the owls. This is a nice kind of purplish gray, I guess I would call it, which I think is gonna work really nice with the background. We're also going to do a orangey yellow owl and a red owl. All of the beaks for the owls will be YR27. And while the images are little, I did try to add some fun decorative elements to each of them to just kind of dress up the coloring a little bit. So you'll see that I'll take one of my darker shades of markers and kind of try to add some texture to the um, front of each owl. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just kind of taking the tip of my marker and laying it down. For the eyes, I am going to do a little YR31 to each of the eyes so they have a yellow glow to them. And I will go back at the very end and try to just kind of smooth out any of the what I call rough edges of the owl eyes with the colorless blender. YR 31, 27, 23, and 24 are the colors I'm using for the orange yellow owl. And again, I will add some of that same texture to this guy too. 
and the yellow for the eyes. Darkest marker is gonna be used to add that little texture, maybe some little flicks or feathers there on the wing. And then we're gonna to go to our brighter red color as the base, but we're going to shade with a couple of darker red colors, which are R37 and 39. This is R35. At first, when I did the R35, I worried a little bit that it was gonna to be too bright, but when you shade in with the dark colors, I really like how it turned out. We're also going to take a white pen and add in some fun detail and some little highlights and things like that to really make our cute little owl images shine. This owl has decorative, decorative stamping already on the front, so I will just take a white pen and kind of add in some extra detail here in a minute. Here's the colorless blender that I'm gonna use for the eyes to just kind of help smooth out some of those yellow lines. I'll take a black jelly roll pen and add in the detail for the eyes so that they really pop. And then we'll take the white pen and add some decorative detail to the red owl, some little highlights, all of that kind of good stuff. I try not to go too overboard and just add in like some little white dots to cheeks and maybe a little highlight to the head on each. I die cut these with the Brothers Scan and Cut and now I can start assembling my background. I'm gonna have the two branches, each one coming in from an opposite direction. I'm going to use some long, skinny foam adhesive strips, and we're going to pop everything up on our card except for the hearts with foam adhesive. Starting with the branches helps kind of give you an idea of where everything is going to go. I did make sure that the branch hung off the side of each. Now I kept most of the branch of the first one and I'm going to shift the second branch over a little bit so that they're not exactly equal in length and I did that very purposely. On purpose? I don't even know if I said that right. You guys, I've done too many videos this month. <laughs> so there are my branches and now we're going to take some Simon Says Stamp Foam Adhesive Squares and Pop Up Our Owls. I think I used maybe a large and a small on each. I love my foam adhesive. So here are two owls on the top branch and then just one on the second. You could add more if you wanted to. By only having one, it does give me enough room to add three rows of text right on my background. Now I did let my background sit in completely dry for plenty of time, um, probably two hours or more maybe. Um, not really on purpose. I often will do that if I know that I'm doing a background and that I want to heat emboss on it. I will generally do like all the steps for that. I'll go work on something else and then I come back to that project as I can when the ink is all the way dry because I really prefer air drying as opposed to trying to get it dry with a heat tool. I'm not successful at it and that's usually why I opt not to do it. I am going to put some crystal lacquer on the eyes of all of my owls and the little hearts so that it will dry completely clear and give them a glossy raised finish. Look how cute! Then I'm going to take my background and place it in a misty, and I'm gonna line up all three of my greetings and stamp them all at once. Now, I could have used white embossing powder, but I felt like white almost would be too starkly white against this background. I am not really necessarily the outline, obviously, of our die cut images, but 
The colors of our background, I felt like the cream embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp would look a little bit better. I love cream. If you're ever on the fence and don't want bright white, but you still want something kind of in that color family, I highly recommend the cream embossing powder. I absolutely love it. So I prepped my background first with the powder tool. I stamped my greetings and I'm sprinkling on my cream embossing powder now. And I did notice that it didn't stamp great right there by the letter T. So I'm going to take a paintbrush and kind of try to carefully remove some of those stray flakes. And this is another project that probably would have been easier if I just laid everything out and figured out where it was going to go and stamped and embossed first and then adhered everything in place. But I did not do it that way. So um, this is real life and real creating. Sometimes it doesn't, you see later how it could have gone smoother. <laughs> I am going to heat both the front and the back of my panel, melting that embossing powder. When I'm all finished, I do want to trim off the excess branches hanging off both sides of my card and adhere this to a white top fold card base. I don't have a big dish for my cream embossing powder. I need to get one, so I had to funnel it back into the jar. And here I'm just snipping off those little edges and there is our card. Now I felt that it didn't need any extra embellishment. It has those three little hearts. Often you know I'll add a heart to my project, but since I used the stamped hearts and I added crystal lacquer to them, I didn't think I needed to add any additional. I'm gonna let the background and the cute images speak for themselves. I'm covering the front of a white top fold card base with adhesive, popping down my card panel and my card, featuring the Simon Says Stamp Limited Edition Exclusive Owl Ways My Favorite from My Favorite Things is all done. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Stamp Timber 2022 Limited Edition Exclusive. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring a Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber 2022 exclusive that you might be interested in. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my wonderful Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to have you over there as part of our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time.